Good morning, folks. Today we've got detailed space weather learning, news on pre-seismic signals, climate science, and we'll revisit yesterday's top story after a nearly unanimous email response to yesterday's website podcast said our deeper dive needed to be shared online. But let's get started at spaceweathernews.com and we find the last 24 hours on our star brings more coronal hole visibility from the left, active regions crackling at the right. Yesterday we had said the sunspots turning through were in decay and they surely were. But the lead grouping, while it had disappeared from an umbral perspective, exploded back to life overnight. Hello, feel free to keep right on turning to the far side before you erupt there, big guy. Solar wind here. Let's start with purple and green at the bottom. Plasma speed and temperature. They were descending, but shot back up to a plateau in the middle of the chart and over to the right side. That is the faster, hotter coronal hole stream, and it's of mild intensity only. Above that, in yellow, the density jump that happened just before the faster and hotter particle signatures below is the slower solar wind bunched up out ahead of the faster stream, like snow on a shovel blade, and it always impacts right before the faster stream does. Up in blue, the phi angle, the magnetic angle of the solar wind and sector magnetism flips when the density shock arrives, or sometimes even a bit before. Up in red and black is the overall magnetic disturbance to Earth, the negative numbers are more impactful to the Earth, and so with the initial density shock bringing the largest deviation in red and black up top, be not surprised that the geomagnetic disruption from this impact was brief, minor, and waning back now as the stream has plateaued. By the way, looking ahead, this filament over here at the limb appears to have the stability to make it all the way onto the Earth-facing disk. Could be an eruption alert if it holds on a few more days. We're going to head over to the articles next, where we start with the thermal anomalies of Pakistan and their preceding large earthquakes there. This is directly related to the outgoing long-wave radiation factor we use, but can also be accomplished with just normal surface temperature surveying. Either way, this vector is the third of the location forecasting pieces we use in the model. The man who really started the electroquake thing long ago, and who took as much flack as anyone as Sergei Polinitz. He leads a new group of electroquake scientists in investigating how to use the global electric circuit to see the pre-seismic signals, which is of course what we do with the pressure cells and electron anomalies in the atmosphere. Up next, this one seeks to find which models predict the scariest stuff in climate change. Must be almost grant season again. They were able to indeed find some warming scenarios that will fill their pockets, but they used the RCP 8.5 scenarios and the oversensitive CO2 bias models with no changes to them at all. So to put this another way, if you don't fix the known bias and oversensitivity to CO2, and then you use the scenario where we pump unrealistically high CO2 into the air, yes, you can make it look like the planet is going to get very, very warm. A happier climate science note here as Zhao's latest hit MDPI, and this is a name we see a lot in our book. The title describes the basic idea, and the paper is not subtle. Okay, folks, this is yesterday's top story, and it was about the polar mesospheric summer echoes and how they are increasing. And since they are driven by charged dust, the best explanation is that Earth's weakening magnetic field is allowing more charged particles in, which we know to be true already, such as to be more available to charge the icy dust. But something else hit me when I was reading it, and I was so infantly in the mental process of it, it was premature at this hour yesterday. But by our podcast in the late morning, I had reconciled and played devil's advocate against myself and tried to debunk the idea outright. Folks, if it's based on electrified icy dust, what's the other explanation besides more charged particles? More dust. It can be subtle a faint slide into higher density. It can fully explain the signals or work in concert with the Earth's weakening field and extra electrification. Them working together would be my guess. Folks, the dust is a key component of the galactic current sheet that does not really come with the sun's current sheet. In the solar system, photoionization and solar wind have cleared the dust mostly clean, but the interstellar medium is like the trash can. Same for the nova dust and the dust that never made it into any other star system attracted to the galactic sheet, like a Swiffer static duster in space, and it delivers one of the two nova triggers that come with the galactic sheet to the sun. One of the predictions we have made is that as the sheet overcomes the system, we would begin to see slight increases in space dust. This may just be the start. We greatly appreciate your support. 
We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.